dot coms, dot orgs, dot nets, and every other kind of dots were being surfed throughout the world as we progressed through the 1990s. Those who had not yet learned that a mouse was no longer just a small rodent, or that a ram was not just a large goat, would find themselves being left behind in a world that was increasingly being run by computers. Then, as the final seconds of the 20th century ticked away, we all watched to see if the world would be plunged into darkness. Okay, hold on, hold on, I've, hold on. I'm prepared. Dark in here. Oh. Nope, sorry. Thank okay. you. <clears throat> okay. Okay, wait a minute. Plunged into darkness, and we would have to start consuming the stockpile of food and water we stored away in our garages. Oh, yes, the infamous Y2K. Thank you. <laughs> would technology, which had become such a progressive staple in our lives, actually bring about the end of our culture as we knew it? Well, we all now know the answer to that. An entire century has passed before us this evening in a short amount of time. When we consider all that has happened, both good and evil, in our nation and in our world this past century, as well as all that has occurred during our own lifetimes, we need to reflect upon the absolute sovereignty of God. Did any of these events take him by surprise? No, they did not. God's plan and purpose have been at work throughout the 20th century and those centuries leading up to it. We do not see God and Satan battling it out for supremacy. Rather, what we see is Satan's futile attempts to derail God's plan, only to then see God use those evil attempts to reveal his grace, bringing about salvation to many and continuing to fulfill his ultimate purpose. Therefore, consider what we have seen and heard here tonight. Would the U.S. have taken up arms in the 1940s to rid the world of the evil taking place had it not been for the bombing of Pearl Harbor? As the world population grew, the opportunity to preach the gospel grew. Airplanes, automobiles, radio, television, and now the World Wide Web have enabled us to bring the gospel to millions. Did it take bad economic policies before we were ready for a man like Ronald Reagan to come on the scene with a better way? And then this same president was used to, to help bring about the end of the Iron Curtain. Would the communist bloc countries be as hungry to receive Christ had they not been subjected to an atheistic regime? We see throughout biblical history how tribulation and suffering bring individuals and even nations to dependence upon our Lord. We have seen this tonight through our study of the past history. How is God using these events to fulfill his ultimate plan? We can only speculate. History truly is his story. Now consider God's working in your own life. Just as it is difficult to see how one piece of the puzzle fits together to create a larger picture, it is sometimes difficult to see how our individual lives play a part in God's greater ultimate plan. But this we do know. Your life, your future on this earth is uncertain. Events and powers of wicked intent are here at work to destroy you and your loved ones. Each generation we covered here tonight had their share of troubles and tragedies. Even the culture in which they lived helped shape their beliefs and values, whether good or evil. The second truth is this. Your entire hope for overcoming this uncertain earthly existence is found only in Jesus Christ. The world and our culture offer no hope. Fearmongers continue to try and convince you that we live in a hopeless age and that science and government are our only source of hope. Instead, God offers eternal hope. God's intent for all of you here tonight is that you seek him. Jesus Christ overcame the world and now offers you that same certainty. No matter what life throws at you, you can have the assurance of knowing that God is in control of both the destiny of this world and your individual life. Trust him and discover the difference this makes in your life and purpose while on this life's journey. We also need to recognize that the people in this very room are a hearty group, sustained through the difficult times by the strength and the grace of God, and that we have been privileged to live in a much blessed land. In spite of the hard times, we have many, many sweet memories of family and friends and our Christian faith. And tonight, as we recall those times, 
We're going to take a few moments just to thank our Heavenly Father for the great privilege of knowing Him, our God who has sustained us, who loves us, who has brought us joy and peace in the midst of all that has happened. I want to give you about 30 seconds just to bow your head and thank God for those blessings. So I Father, out of all the generations that have lived on the face of this earth, we surely must be the most blessed. Those who've had greater privileges than any others. Those who've lived in such a special, special land that you established here. And Father, tonight we humbly thank you. We thank you. And we praise you for being who you are. We pray that even through the message of this evening of your sovereignty, that each one here would recognize your sovereignty in their lives. There are times, Father, when it seems that our lives just simply fall apart. But we need to hold on to you, and we thank you that as we do, you honor our faith, and you strengthen it, and you are all sufficient. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us. Thank you for making us your own. For we pray this in your name together. Amen. Amen. Well, we would like to have all of those who were uh, a part of our program tonight to just line up here across in front of the podium. I want you to see how many people were involved. Took all of these. And we need to especially thank Rich Merrill. Yes. <laughs> you could see his handiwork all the way through this, couldn't you? So thank you for coming and uh, making it possible for us to come and make this as a gift to you. God bless you. We'd love to do it again. If you have any other venues for us, let us know. <laughs> At the same time. <laughs> We'd actually like to go on the road, so if anybody wants to donate a big bus and have it painted, you know, and all that. Thanks a lot.